do, were very particular on what you when you had well, when you had to fo- when you had to focus a camera, you had to look in the viewfinder longer and stuff. And you know what? As you were in there and you were focusing it and looking, you know, you would go, "Oh no, no, no! A little bit more this way, or a little, you know." Right. You spent more time Change framing framing that shot and stuff. You know, you, now the, you put the, more into it. Well, the the good thing about it is that we learned manual. So if anything mm-hmm. ever happens with the world of electronics, we don't have a problem going back. You can go back, back to basics. You know, basics. and all my equipment is still, you know, I would, you know, I would still definitely use all manual anyway. Uh-huh. You yeah. know, um, and it just, it's just, uh, I just know that the growing society as it is now could never, ever go back to manual if they didn't know how to do it. Right. <coughs> right. But then as far as audio goes, it, it, it hit... It hit a pinnacle, and, and I say, even in the early 50s, certainly by the mid-50s, high-fidelity <coughs> recording had gotten to such, they had gotten it to such a fine art where it truly was high-fidelity, you know. That's right. And, 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 uh, <coughs> and actually, I, I have heard recordings that, uh, of some, some things like uh, German symphonies and stuff like that, even back to the 40s, but... Uh, but certainly in this country by the 50s, the quality of recording, um, some of the early stuff about who, what, who did Rock Around the Clock. Uh, Bill Haley. Like yeah, some, of the, some of the early Bill Haley <coughs> recordings. I do not know who engineered that stuff, but some of the early Bill Haley recordings are, are phenomenal. All those first batch of DECA stuff were, were done really, really well. Because, you know, don't forget, they used to... They I told used to be you the same people that worked with, for Dick. That's right. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and they did all the London stuff as well. So uh, mm-hmm. they was, had that down. London was good quality stuff, uh-huh. wasn't it? Even yeah. the first batch of Rolling Stones 45s. I mean, I it's like they just sound so much. I mean, you, you can uh, now they're on, the, they're on Abco now, you know, all those original ones, that Alan and Betty Klein. Another story. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, you definitely, you know, even the Cameo Parkway. You know, uh, the the Chubby Checkers and Bobby Rydells. Uh-huh. If you ever listen to the way they used to play the saxophones and whatnot, uh-huh. it's not the fact that the musicians were superior, because they were. They were. Yes, they were. But it was the way they engineered the song mm-hmm. and the way they, how they pressed it and how warm it felt to you mm-hmm. and how inviting it was to you. It's not like, if you hear them live, and you can even use the same musicians, it still doesn't sound the same. It doesn't have that... Oomph, that depth. Yeah, um, there was you, something special about it. I'll give. I, I don't know if I ever <coughs> told you this story. When um, when Ho- Howard Solomon, who had the Cafe Go Go, at one point he took uh, um, partners in on the Cafe Go Go, and they totally revamped the place. He took all the old gear out of there and packed it in boxes and put it in a warehouse up in New York. And then he moved down to to Miami, down to Coconut Grove, and he brought it with him. And put it in a warehouse there, and eventually he got, he got a building down there, and we and we started pulling it all out, and and we and we we reset up the cafe a go go in oh, wow. in in a building down in in Coconut Grove, which I'll I'll have to admit was primarily used just for private parties, but uh, but I was at most of those. Oh, <laughs> and it, but it, when we opened those boxes. It was like when they had packed it up, they had packed the magic up with it too. Wow. And when and when you open those boxes, it would come out and get on you. You know what I mean? And uh, and so he had a a, he had a a 1946 Wurlitzer jukebox. And 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 I'm I'm rolling this jukebox in, and I'm like I'm like, where did you get this? And he goes, I bought that. He says as a conversation piece for Jimi Hendrix's birthday party uh-huh. that I threw. Okay. He said, and, and, and I said, does it work? He says, well, put a nickel in it and see. <laughs> so I plugged it in, and I put a nickel in it, and it came up playing Little Richards. I, I, I want to say slipping and sliding. Or no, no, I, don't, I can't remember now. I, said, I hear you knocking or something. Little Richard on a 78 RPM record. Specialty records. I don't know. It was, on, yeah. it was a 78 RPM record, and it came up, and it was the rockinest. Best sounding through a through a Wurlitzer jukebox from, from 1946. <coughs> Wurlitzer jukebox playing a 78 RPM record of of Little Richard was the best rockinest Little Richard I had ever heard. Not heard some good rockin' Richard. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. That was the best. 
was that time, and I was just so impressed. There was something special about it. There really was. It's the same thing with like records now. We've got the USB record players. It's not the same as when you pop it. Like the old record player I had with the eight track attached to it. When you put a record in that, it was bassy. It just sounded really good. Uh-huh. All the sound was there. Well, you, your USB the record thing. What what format does it? Is it is it sixteen forty four one or is it? Uh, or does it do higher bit rates and stuff? It, it can do higher. Okay. It can do yeah, higher. It's really versatile. Mm-hmm. Need we need to get you one. You can, you can just <laughs> assign it for what you, you yeah. want. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's just a fantastic tool. All it, all it really is is just it's... A turntable with it, a turntable. Yeah, it's just bringing back my youth to, you know... Uh-huh. To another form. That's so the pretty nice turntable, the turntable itself, is it kind of beefy or is it shinsy? I... Er, uh, uh, a little of both. <sighs> it it's a just little, a new turntable. Yeah, I don't okay. think it's anything. It's not like it's not sturdy it or anything. With some cheap plastic like those new cars. You know? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 really you know, good. the the kids, the DJ kids, they like those. Um, the techniques. Techniques. techniques yeah. What are they? What's the number? Uh, yeah. Anyway, those those techniques. Those yeah, the one with the P mounts. Yeah. yeah. Well, so they do. Just, they do have the. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the P mounts myself. But, uh, but, tinny. but, yeah, but, yeah, well, I can go on about cartridges too. You probably know about cartridges. My, my, okay, I grew up, my father, this is the kind of advice my father gave to me as a child. This is fatherly advice was, uh, always use Pickering cartridges and sure makes some good cartridges too. Some. That, that's some. What, that's what the advice from my father as a child. Uh, you use uh, use Ampex tape, and Scotch makes good tape too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, this is what, that's, that's, this is what know, my father told I, me. I've spent most of my youth in in stores like Lafayette Radio. Mm-hmm. You know those even those stores had special smells to them. The old Lafayette amplifiers were actually they were some high fidelity pieces of gear. They were they oh, sounded I beautiful. Them. They did, and I went to a show one time. <coughs> it was um, uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane, and I was checking out, and and it was the it was the guy who had done sound for Jefferson Airplane for a lot of years, uh-huh. you know, and it, and his and his and his rig was honestly somewhat pieced together and stuff like that. But I here's what I noticed was where he had his mixing board and all this kind of stuff. When he came out of his mixing board, he drove it into an old Lafayette amplifier, and he used the old Lafayette amplifier then to drive it to the stage. Really? Yeah, that was his, that was his, um, I, I don't know, uh, uh, distribution amp. He used it as a distribution amp, an old Lafayette amp. And and I looked at that, and, and I said, well, I've got that same amp at home. You know, he says, he says, yeah, he says, I just couldn't get rid of it. He said, it sounds so good. And I just put it in, and that was his distribution amp to give him the drive back to the stage. <laughs> and then he drove the, the, the big amps there. Lafayette used to have so many special specialty items uh-huh. uh, to adapt and, 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 and build. And uh, I don't know who, who bought their parts place out in New York. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it was Jericho, New York or something. They were near the, that military mm-hmm. Trying to think of that. Well, I went in Lafayette Electronics one time, <coughs> and they had changed their provider of of replacement semiconductors, like they had used what ECGs or something, or they had gone to anyway. They had changed one for another, and and I went in, and they were pulling all of the, of the transistor, all the semiconductors and stuff, down off off the pegboard, and were replacing them with the the new brand, and they they put them all in one big box. And I bought the box for like 25 bucks or something. Uh-huh. I just bought the box of semiconductors. And I had replacement semiconductors for anything <laughs> you wanted. For years, that box served me. <laughs> God, I'm, and so I went in there one time and I wanted a, something like a, um, you know, like a 5-watt a uh, half-ohm resistor. Or something like that, and the and the couple that owned the one in went the store in Winston Salem, I think, were from um, Cuba. Were Cubans, and and I talked to the woman. And I told her what I wanted, and she said to me, she says, "That is about a strange value." She says, and, I, and I'm like, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I'm listening to it. 
That is a very strange value. That is a very strange, strange value. value. <laughs> but it, for, for a minute, she says, like, that is a very strange value. And I'm like, what language are we here? <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. And, uh, of course, Tandy Radio Shack. Tandy Radio oh, Shack. Well, you, they used the combination. Shack. Well, Tandy yeah. was... Well, it, uh, there they was radio, leather. There was Radio Shack. Tandy Radio Shack had come from from uh, Texas, Texas, right? And they imported uh, electronics. They had an import license, and then they they either they bought out or they merged with Allied. Allied Radio company. Shack. Mm-hmm. Remember the catalogs? Oh, I love those catalogs. Those old Allied catalogs. Yeah. They had everything in them, didn't they? They really did. They had a great assortment. Radio Shack used to be cool, and then yeah. years ago it started to fuck well, out. It's, it's, com- it's a commercial venture, just to understand. I used Radio to get Shack anything that said Micronta on it, I used to get. Uh-huh. Anything. Uh, just because it said Micronta on it. I thought it was cool. Micronta. Um, <laughs> we used to make, well, the little pee boxes. Remember those? Uh-huh. Little kids? P. P. The, a Micronta pee P box. <laughs> Project box. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they used, oh, yeah. They used to come with a plastic breadboard. You oh, used to yeah. make your own little weather station, your sure. radio station. I mean, oh. this was what it taught kids how to read schematics. Mm-hmm. No, the kids don't know how to do that now. They'll probably never even. That's like, well, we, no. we had and to learn anymore. slide rules. And anymore, Just, you don't even read schematics that much because it's, in the, it's, in, it's the in the chip. It's all the chip. Right. So you really, the components are the lesser part of the whole project. You, I mean, you know, it's all the fun chip. out of it. I mean, it you does, know, you know. It does. But they, but they it's, ha- fun, it's fun to build with amp, op amps too. I build wonderful things with op amps. Yeah. Uh, they they carried a great assortment of microphones, both, both uh-huh. prof- pro and non pro, and uh-huh. their audio tapes were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, reel to reel, I miss those. Mm-hmm. I miss uh, actually they had good reel to reel recorders too, because mm-hmm. they used to carry their own brands, and. A th- a who used to make their stuff? Um, M- Marantz? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, they doled them out, just like Sears used to. You know, these mm-hmm. t- you know, whoever was around, they'd contract them to make their own. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had some really... I miss going to the real the real old stores. But I was saying that these techniques, turntables, <coughs> the ones that the kids buy now, are a good turntable. They're, oh, they're, 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 uh, they're uh, as you know, they're, they're driven from the center. Well, they, they're, they've got a little, you know, one of those little right. s- circular... Uh, arrangements of magnets and stuff, you know, yeah. but uh, but what do they, do they call it? Direct drive. They're direct drive turntables, but they've got they've got some beef to the turntable. If you've ha- have you had right. one apart, I have had, you felt it. Yeah, it's got a decent. It's got some decent weight to the platter. You know, it's the it's not it won't break your arm, but it's it's decent. Right. And and uh, and 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 I'm I'm pleased with the exception of the P mount cartridges. I'm not too crazy about those little cartridges. I like the the old Stantons and and uh, right. and Stanton and and Pickering's the same thing. It's not easy to get them replaced now either. It's really it's like a whole trip doing a replacement. It's pretty expensive. Hmm. I, I like got that one down at the yard. Well, up at the yard sale back home. It's still back there um, too. It's a brand new technique. Some kid just. Ran out of money and wanted to sell all this stuff. I got ten bucks. You do? Yeah. All right. needle was shot on it, so it's still sitting back in Massachusetts. I got to get it sent oh, to me. Oh, get it, get it, get but it. But it's beautiful. And it's an old technique. It's a technique. It's one of the it. new ones. Mm-hmm. It's worth a lot. And he just, uh-huh. yeah. go, go, go. So, I don't know. Maybe he jacked it. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. <laughs> but uh, it's mine now. Yeah, I like the platters that had the, the strobe built in. Yeah. So you could actually see. They are head. You actually right. watch it. Yeah. I remember I had one. Honest to God, I had one that went all the way back to the fifties. But okay, let me tell you what this was, and you, you, this may be hard to believe. It was it, the brand of the turntable was a Channel Master brand with a strobe light built in it, uh-huh. and the motor that drove the thing. It, they had a, a they had a a, a, a a magnet out beside it, and and to adjust the speed, the magnet would get closer and further away from the motor. And that would that would cause it to slow down or, uh-huh. or speed up, and you could and and that would that would adjust the speed of the turntable, and you could and you could watch the strobe light. I think you had to see it off bounce off of a mirror. I want to say it was it was up in the inside, but it would bounce off of a mirror, and you could see that, and you could adjust it with that. Cool. You know. Cool. <laughs> I had a, a a combination Weathers garage dread. 
Gerard. Gerard. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, the old Gerard. Weathers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I had a Weathers turntable that it was black onyx. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it was it was it was a military one. Mm-hmm. Um, they used to play the 16-inch army discs on there. Oh, the big that was the yeah. big one you had. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. I'm I had, telling you, the US I had one arm, of those too. Armed Forces radio. I had one of those too, and and I don't remember if it was a Gates. <clears throat> it might have been a Weathers. It was the, the whole. Yeah, it was a whole, big bass. The whole thing was yeah, it was big, big, fat, ma- big metal bubble, bass. Bubble and on to it. change speeds, it was like a gear shift <clears throat> uh-huh. on it. You know, and it had a motor in there about this size. Oh, the thing was heavy. And, and, heavy, a, heavy, and, heavy. A, and a and a and a big rubber uh, flywheel or, or idle wheel on it, like this drive wheel. <coughs> and I had another turntable. Maybe have you ever heard of an EMT turntable? I had an EMT turntable, and it had electric brakes on it. The turntable, which okay. had right much beef to it, and it had a, it had a, a, a motor bigger than your double fist driving uh-huh. it, and the uh, and the turntable would turn, and it was but it was just driven by a rubber wheel. But it, uh, um, then there was a plastic platter, which was fairly beefy, but a plastic platter that rode on top of that, of that, and you put and, and it had felt on the bottom of it, and you put graphite on it. And it had the little markings on it, and the strobe lights shined up through the plastic. And then it was a felt top turntable and a very fancy arm with one of those little little strings over and the uh-huh. little weight that dangled and all that, you know. And but but it had electric brakes on the side with a switch. And when you engage the brakes, they stopped the top part, but not the the but the bottom part kept Racist. kept running. And so it was like you know how DJs. Uh, uh, they usually have a felt top and they just hold their fingers on the record and they let it up like that right. and it goes but this thing was like that and you could you could stop it and start it and you could take words off of a record one word at a time with the with the electric brakes on that thing it was so like doop, 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 well, our USB, USB turntable is too much warm, different than that it's pretty automatic well, look at the pretty, dual belt so you can you can right. do like DJ mixing if you want to but it's got <clears> two <throat> big buttons on either side so you could stop it and reverse it and just uh-huh. and it's fun. and you can it is pretty responsive I mean mm-hmm. it, there's no lag in oh, between yeah. and it's it's done does, does it have very <clears throat> much mass to the turntable say it again does it have very much mass to the turntable. No, the table itself so the, is pretty it's lightweight. It's it's it, no, it's it's pretty lightweight. Now yeah. the now the platter itself is sort of heavy. That's what I'm saying. That's why. Yeah. I'm the it's got um, weight on the bottom of it, but the actual plastic. But it's is, you expect it to be. I mean, it's a very it's definitely not. Like it's a misnomer or, when you look at it. Hmm? I mean, it's a misnomer when you look at it. It looks like it's, uh, but it's not. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's a lot. Uh, I guess it's a lot beefier than I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. Um, I was just surprised. That, a lot, yeah, yeah, because you could like you could do your sales, you could do yeah. your seventy eights and software wise you could change things to the speed that you want to keep it at mm-hmm. you know, and you could take the pops and clicks out although I keep them in because I love them, mm-hmm. you know, and it does bring you know like a somebody further down the line can take them out if they want them. Right, you know, like remastering at home mm-hmm. for yourself. Well, the thing is, like if you could take the forty five of Elvis Presley, uh, actually it wasn't. a it was an EP forty five. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you're mine. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same one with Old Shep on it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you play that <clears throat> and record it, and you have that warm sound that he had with the bass, Bill Black's bass, mm-hmm. uh, this turntable plays it the way you want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could close your eyes and picture, probably like uh, the nineteen fifty one or orthophonic. Mm-hmm. Cabinet it stood about this high. Oh, it, was it sounds like blonde that. Mm-hmm. with the big yeah, and then you you cover it up and you you every Saturday afternoon you play that in your parlor. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I see when I hear. Are you talking about mm-hmm. the big one that was like built in. Not the not the console one, but it's it stood about this high, and it had legs, and it was about that wide. You'd probably mistake it for a refrigerator with. With speaker, with one uh, in the front, yeah, speaker cloth. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm trying to think of what's that material? Speaker material. Speaker material. Speaker, you know the braided cloth. Braided cloth. <laughs> cloth. <Stop>. Yeah. Cloth. <laughs> you know, actually, anything back then that had the His Master's Voice logo on it, mm-hmm. it was like it, it, you know, for I a know. record label to to distribute. Well, combination RCA GE. Oh. You know, it's. 
They RCA, sounded fine. I RCA mean, built yeah. some. RCA built some serious uh -huh. heavy duty pieces of equipment. Thirty dollar mm -hmm. radios that you could drop in that bakelite, bakelite, mm -hmm. bakelite stuff, and it mm -hmm. wouldn't break. Guaranteed not to crack. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how Paul Classic. says it. Mm -hmm. Paul says it. Guaranteed not to crack. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the record labels used to deal, you know, they used to manufacture and distribute their own labels, uh, old labels, needles, mm -hmm. all the accessories, like oh. Emmy texted. Mm -hmm. Of course, I love Emmy I don't Emmy even text. know now how you get pro a proper needle for an old 78 recording. Unfortunately, uh, nine times the, out of ten, you go down to like... The new microgroove, the microgroove needles aren't the proper. Well, you know. uh, no, but if you you can get the you can get remember how they used to come in tins? Yeah. Okay, you can still get them like that. Um, there are these guys that. No, but uh, then you've got a cart. They have a cartridge that those will fit in. Well, probably not. Or something. Uh, you said that you had a <coughs> CD for Glow Ra Glow Lady or DVD. Mm -hmm. Where would that be lying around? Did, oh, did she not bring it in? Oh, she's not even gonna be here this week. No, no, no. The other woman is bringing it. Oh, okay. Well, she's not here yet. Okay. Hopefully she'll she, be. Like, she did give me a copy, and I did not bring it with me, but she has one. Okay. All right. All right hopefully I don't think be. it's going to work anyway, but I mean, all right, I, I great, was just great, tell great. You that well, when you encounter that, try it. Yeah. Well. It's all right. Like, it might work in the DVD player, but I doubt yeah. it. We'll try no it. idea. No idea. This is going to be a very fly by the seat of our pants episode. Yeah. But you know, that's okay. It's, it's one of the true good. joys of. Uh, low budget slash no budget live TV where everybody <laughs> else has actual 40 hour jobs so. or more or more mm -hmm. or more okay or more you have more do, you, do they make do they more hours mm -hmm. yeah. yeah are you on salary or do they pay you do they pay you it's hourly, hourly. Uh, do they pay you hourly uh, they're in with the middle the time? Of, uh, you, this next week will be I'm doing Sunday to Sunday and I'll probably be mm. working Thursday uh, Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. Are you working tonight? Do you, do you go in tonight? No, not no. tonight. Okay. Um, uh, this right. is my night off. No, I've got I'm glad that you shared it with us. Thank you for sharing your... But we'll be here Sunday. We're off day with us. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is my one off day, too. Yay. Not much left in there. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it, it? It was some... Uh, um, you were thinking the cranberry juice. today, too? Oh, cranberry yeah. juice with some ice in it. I went up to and grab some cranberry today, and I put it mm -hmm. in my Sprite. Now all it is is just some melted ice. <laughs> uh, yummy. Mm. Mm. Well, are we out of tea or is there still something? Oh no, there's still there's plenty in lot. there. I see you. It looks like you might have had tr trouble eating, drinking the uh, the well, tea that Randy doesn't like. Well, yeah, I combined it with that, and I, I just that wouldn't work either. I like that one. I didn't I like do the it. honey thing though. Does uh, anybody use the honey? I'll need to put, I can put that in some hot water and, and make it talk. We, we'll have to, we have to go through extreme measures to get it out. <laughs> that won't work. Wait. It'll sit there all day. That won't even work, I don't think. But, but, <coughs> it's because it's little honey. If but you know big what? Honey, if, we put, if we filled the, the, the head of the alien with hot water and put that honey bear down in that hot water, I bet it'll work. Oh. I'll do that. I'll do get That's the, the one money. that Randini brought from Area 51? Mm -hmm. Now, we know, now we know what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> do you notice this? It says, do not feed honey to infants under one year. Uh, <laughs> That's why I'm brain damaged. So you're <laughs> denying... I had honey before I was one, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm brain damaged. We had a... I we did. Honey's like lead. Well, we did have a baby formula that used honey. Do you think they'd like? It's just because they're gonna choke on it. They won't be able to like. The saliva is not gonna mix well. Or they'll be like. Uh, uh, if you give uh, maybe, peanut butter to a baby. Maybe honey's just not honey. good for a baby. That's all. Yeah. This this is gonna be the show. The show. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be the show. The show where the old guys sit around and reminisce about the good old days. <laughs> Because, oh yeah, everything was better back then. Flash pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So you have a problem with teacups all of a sudden? 
No, the what's that? <laughs> do, you, do you need some more? We have no, 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 no. You, uh, you said something about the oh, third yeah. place you were going to. Have you gone to Habitat for Humanity? No, I, have, I haven't had a chance to hit all the places. I've been... I've been living in computer hell for a while. Uh, you know, you know. You're still not. Oh, I'm. I've. Oh, I've been successful. I've actually uh, managed to, uh, <coughs> to to import some stuff off of a DVD and edit it and and burn it to another DVD and stuff. So I'm. You know, I, I, I've had some success. I'm very happy to have had some success. But uh, but that but it's it's taken all my free time to yeah. accomplish it. It's just it's that way sometimes, you know. I know. I know. Mm. The techno technology, you know. You can see it's already beginning to change a little bit. So here in hey the there, hi there, ho oh there. <laughs> yeah, cool? We both wobble. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And we have this thing too. Have you have, have, have you well, had have you had this demonstrated already? You can do it. No, I just sorry. It's okay. I have I have something. I have this. <laughs> oh yeah. I that. You were hitting that accidentally a lot the other night. Oh, it was I was laughing. That's what it's because it was coming like, out in on. stereo. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, now tell me something. Does it come out in stereo at home on your TV set? <laughs> it sounds like it is. It sounds like it is. We'll do an experiment. Uh -huh. And find out. Do you have a stereo TV? Right? Yes, stereo TV, stereo recorder. So okay, you don't have, uh, but you, but oh, okay, so you've got a stereo DVD or recorder St or VCR or something. VCR. Okay. Well, of course I have a stereo DVD. Okay. Um, uh, now this show will repeat tomorrow night, right? It should. Sunday night, Saturday night. Right. Two o'clock. It should. Uh -huh. Whatever. All right. So here's what we'll do. We'll do a little experiment now. Okay. Well, I'll do it with this microphone, okay? And now, if we're r wired up right, I've turned it all the way to the right. Here, I'll turn you all the way to the left. Okay. All right. Now, so that puts us on. I'm I'm all the way on the right. And my mic sounds nice. Check one. Okay. Now I'm going to turn you all the way to the left, and me all the no me. Now you're all the way to the right, and I'm all the way to the left. And now, do you hear me any differently? Okay. The right is uh, is I've turned me to the left. So, I should turn me to the right. Is it in here? Yeah. Can you, hear it in there? you can see it. Yeah, it's here. Okay. <laughs> right. right. I'm on the right. And I'm happy to be yes. living in a split level head. And I've got the uh, headphones on backwards. No, you don't. Are you? Yeah, right. It's over here. No, that's, that's not. That's, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Okay, so what side am I? You're on the left. He's on the right. I'm on the right. I don't. <laughs> I can't sing. Anyway, so so that so that'll be an experiment. So if you record it or if you see it, can can you determine? I don't have cable TV. I don't have TV stuff. You know, Do, can you can you determine if we get? I'm I'm told that we don't go out stereo. Uh, why? That, really? What you mean? What? Huh? <laughs> I'm told that we're only given a, a amount of. I send from I, just from the live show. You mean? No, I mean no. I mean from the cable company. The, the cable. Uh, of I, course we are. I record in stereo, and all my soundtracks are. I got different things going on at all times. You can def, there's definite. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we be stereo. Oh, <laughs> they'll take all our creativity out of wallpaper. I I put a lot into the audio track. Well, I do too. But no, it's you definite know, I, stereo. Yeah. yeah. Well, who who said? Mono. Who said that? Who said? Who said that? Well, well, well Pat says we said we mono. Maybe it is, and maybe it's just double.